Hey, you crazy Quillwood kids. What is going on? It's me, Mr. Olinger, here to read another book with you. Before, I helped read Holes, which is awesome. I love Holes. And I know now you're reading one of my other favorite, favorite books, The BFG, The Big Funny Giant. No, that's not right. The Big Friendly Giant is right. So um, before we get to that, I have a joke for you. So knock, knock. Who's there? Fee-fi. Fee-fi who? Fee-fi-fo-fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Little joke, giant joke humor for you before we get going. All right. So when you guys last read, Sophie uh, saw a giant through her window. And she freaks out, and she runs back to her bed, and she gets under the covers, and she holds the covers over her bed. Like, why do we think that's going to help? Like, it's just a cover. And um, and she knows there's a giant outside, so she's kind of freaking out a little bit, which I think I would too. So we're going to read uh, the next chapter called The Snatch. Under the blankets, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There, at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was an enormous, long, pale, whiskery-faced giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next moment, a huge hand with pale fingers came snaking in through the window. This was followed by an arm, an arm as thick as a tree trunk, and the arm, the hand. The fingers were reaching out across the room toward Sophie's bed. Can you see that? Oh, no. This time, Sophie really did scream, but only for a second, because very quickly the huge hand clamped down over her blanket and the scream was smothered by the bedclothes. Sophie, crunching underneath the blanket, felt strong fingers grasping hold of her, and then she was lifted up from her bed, blankets and all, and whisked out the window. As you can think of anyone anything more terrifying than that happening to you in the middle of the night, and I'd love to hear about it. An awful thing was Sophie knew exactly what was going on, although she couldn't see it happening. She knew that a monster, uh, or giant, with an enormous, long, pale, whiskery face and dangerous eyes had plucked her from her bed in the middle of what witching hour and now was carrying her through the window, smothered in a blanket. What actually happened next was this. <clears throat> when the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all four corners at once with his huge hands, with Sophie imprisoned inside. In the other hand, he seized the suitcase and the long trumpet thing, and he ran. Sophie started squirming around inside the blanket, managed to push the top of her head out through the little, a little and gasp at the giant's hand below. She stared around her and she saw the village houses rushing by on both sides. The giant was sprinting down the high street. He was running so fast his black coat was streaming on behind him. It was like the wings of a bird. Each stride he took as the long as a tennis court. Out of the village he ran, and soon they were racing across the moonlit fields. The hedges divided the fields were no problem for the giant. He simply strode over them. A wide river appeared in his path. He crossed it in one flying stride. Sophie crouched in the blanket, peering out. She was being bumped against the giant's leg like a sack of potatoes. Over the fields and hedges and rivers they went, and after a while, a frightening thought came into Sophie's head. The giant is running fast, she told herself, because he's hungry, 
and he wants to get home as quickly as possible, and then he'll have me for breakfast. Oh, that's not a good feeling. Next chapter, The Cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change had taken place in the way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went as soon as he was traveling at the speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks. It made her eyes water. It whisked her hair back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. This giant had some of his sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down into the blanket to prevent her head from becoming blown away. Was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow, and Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up in the, out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country as thick as forests and rushing river, rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally, although normal is a silly word to describe a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through the great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. As soon as his galloping was over, a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Giant lumps of blue rock were scattered along with dead trees that stood everywhere. Like skeletons, the moon had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie still peered out from her blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her great and craggly mountain. The mountain was dark blue, and all around its sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate, frosty white flakes of cloud. And over to one side, the rim of the morning sun was coming red as the blood. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. <sighs> Directly in front of them, lying against the side of the mountain, so he could, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as early as, as, if it, as easily as if it had been a football. And now, where the stone had been, there had been a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head when he went inside. He stood into the hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand and the trumpet and the suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a sight of light inside the cave. It was all black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away and Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with fear. He is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me raw, just as I am. Or perhaps he will boil me first. Or we, he will have me fried. He will drop me like a ra rash of bacon in some type of gigantic frying pan, sizzling with fat. 
a blaze of light suddenly, suddenly lit up where the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous caravan with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves, and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor there was a table twelve foot high and a chair to match. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't even seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded green and were far too short in the legs. On his bare feet he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole in the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie crouched on the floor of the cave in, light, in her nighty, gazing back at him through thick steel-rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind and a finger of ice was rushing up and down the length of her spine. Ha! shouted the giant walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has a scuff there? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. Oh, I wonder if Sophie's going to get eaten. Oh my gosh, she's got to be freaking out. So, got to tune in tomorrow to find out what's going to happen with her. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoyed that and... It's really good to see you. So be safe and watch some cool movies. Hopefully you're eating some candy and hanging out by the pool. Um, I wish I was. So that would be awesome. But anyway, uh, good to see you guys again. And we will see you next time.